Good morning, friends, and welcome back to Infinite Gems, where we discover the gems upon the shelves that inspire us to discover the gems within ourselves and then spread the sparkle. Like many of you, I'm sheltering in and I'm not in my usual place, as you can see, but I have found ways to explore the world of books. I've been checking out my local library's digital collection and checking out books that way. I ordered a couple of books from bookshop.org, which sends money to local independent bookstores with its profits. And I've also been looking at an organization called Pratham Books, which is a nonprofit based in India and it has all kinds of books in multiple languages. Really cool. You can download them or read them online. Highly recommend checking those out. Sheltering in isn't easy, but I'm hoping the gems that I've picked out for you will bring a little sparkle of joy and comfort to your heart. The first book that I wanted to recommend is a book you can find online from Pratham Books. It's called Sahana Makes Music, and it is written by Ravi Mundoli and illustrated by Noorin Ahmad. Like lots of kids right now, Sahana is at home, feeling bored, sitting at a table. She uses her hands to tuk 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 on the table, drum on a chair, and then begins to tap 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 on some glasses, which start to ding, ding. As she plays around with the glasses, Sahana suddenly realizes that she is making music. This really short and simple book is a fun way to introduce little ones to sound and how to make music with everyday objects. If you're interested in making your own music at home, all you need is just some glasses, some water, and a little spoon to do some tapping, and I'll show you how to do that. So first up, just place some glasses in a row, fill them up with water, Play around and try to get a feel for what the different sounds sound like. Once you've figured out the right amount of water for each cup, then just go ahead and start tinkering around. If you don't have a lot of the same types of glasses, that's totally fine. You can tinker around with different types of glasses and just play around with the water. So for example, this is a different kind of cup than the other cups that I have. So the sound that it makes is a little bit different. And just remember, the more water that there is, the lower the pitch of the sound. So here we go. Have fun. The next book I wanted to share with you is Ada's Violin, written by Susan Hood and illustrated by Sally Warren Comport. Ada lives in Paraguay in a neighborhood that's full of trash, and many people work as gancheros, recyclers. Ada and her family members love listening to music, and Ada has a special place in her heart for the violin. When Abuela, her grandmother, signs her up for a music class, Ada is thrilled, but soon discovers there aren't enough instruments for everyone. The music teacher then teams up with a carpenter to make instruments out of garbage. After lots of experimentation, they are finally able to make enough instruments for everyone, including Ada, who receives a violin made up of an old paint can, a baking tray, some wooden crates, and a fork. After lots of hard work, Ada and her musician friends are able to perform their beautiful music for not only their neighbors, but people all over Paraguay and all over the world. If you feel as inspired as I do about this incredible true story, you can go to my blog and check out the links for the curriculum guide, how to make your own musical instruments, as well as a documentary about this orchestra. The next book I wanted to share is Feel the Beat by Marilyn Singer and illustrated by Christy Valiant. This super fun book has a poem on each page which follows the rhythm and beats of the dance that they're describing. It even includes a CD that has a recording of the author reciting the poetry and background music that matches the dance. Birthday, Uncle Nate. Good food cleaned my plate. Old songs on CDs. They float on the breeze. Here comes my grandma says, let's cha-cha-cha. Hope this book inspires you and your family to start getting down on the dance floor. Music is medicine and so is laughter, which is why for my next pick, I chose the book Underwear by Jen Harney. The story about a bear who has just finished taking a bath is a recipe for the giggles. Stop right there, a grown-up says. You should be wearing underwear. The goofy conversations may be familiar to some parents. Underwear, underwear, under there, underwear over there, over where? On the chair, up the stairs, 
right there on the chair. There's a pair of underwear. Instead of doing what he's been told to do, he ends up playing around in the bathroom. But don't worry, parents. He does eventually put on his underwear and go to bed. Talking about feelings can sometimes be a challenge, but In My Heart by Joe Wittek and illustrations by Christine Rousset make this topic a little bit easier to handle. A child explains how her heart is full of feelings, sometimes big and bright like a star, and sometimes a little bit broken. More importantly, she explains how feelings can change. For example, when sadness doesn't stay, like the springtime after winter, the sun comes out again. My heart grows tall like a plant, reaching toward the sky. This is when my heart feels hopeful. If mindful breathing is something you'd like to try out at this time, alpha breaths is a great way to start. Tender and playful with simple instructions, this book makes it easy to learn different breathing techniques in a way that's fun for little ones. Whether blowing out candles or roaring like a lion, it's a great way to bring some meditative time to your day. Families around this time have been celebrating Easter, Passover, Ramadan, and Rizwan. For many communities, prayer can be a way to bring healing and hope to the heart. God's Dream is an interfaith way to show kids how people pray or talk to God in different ways. The book features children from different traditions, while also highlighting shared values such as sharing, loving, caring, playing, and laughing together. It acknowledges that sometimes we do get angry and hurt one another. We do feel sad and alone. Sometimes we cry, and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. The book is ultimately a reminder that we are all part of one human family. We Are the Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom, is also about the sacred, but with a focus on nature and water. During this time when we are remembering how important it is to wash our hands, this book reminds us that water is medicine. It reminds us to honor the courageous people who fight to keep our planet safe. We stand. With our songs and our drums, we are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. Mama Miti is another gorgeous book that highlights all the incredible gifts that nature has to offer. It's the story of environmental activist Wangari Mathai and how she helps solve various problems through her wisdom and knowledge of trees. We see, for example, how one woman asks Wangari Mathai for help because she and her children are hungry. There is no longer a job for me in the timber mill, and I have no other skills. What can I do? Wangari then gives her seeds for a mubiru muiru tree, which grows nutritious berries. People from all over Kenya came to Wangari for help, and she always had a solution. A tree for every problem. A tree to cure a sick cow, a tree to filter water, trees that are good for firewood, and trees that make you happy with the fragrance of their flowers. If this book got you all excited about maybe growing some plants of your own, I've posted some resources on my blog that guide you through a few simple indoor and outdoor gardening activities, so feel free to check that out. Feeling helpful and knowing how your actions make a difference can be really empowering for kids. The book Little Helpers gives readers very practical examples of how little ones can have a positive impact on the earth. I may be just one little person, but what I do affects the world in a big way. When I plant a tree, an owl gets a new home. When I reduce, reuse, and recycle, there is more open land for a deer to run on. When I use a cloth grocery bag instead of paper, there are more trees for bears to climb. When we all pitch in a little, it makes a big difference to our world. At the back of the book, there are also some activities you can do, like making a drum or shaker out of recycled materials. If you live in a multilingual household, an international neighborhood, or just have an interest in languages, the book The Arabic Quilt may inspire you to take some time to explore a new language or practice a language you already know. Kenzie, an Egyptian-American, is anxious about her first day at a new school. She's worried because she and her family are different. When a student makes fun of Kenzie's mother for speaking Arabic, Kenzie feels really bad at first. But then a teacher reminds her 
that being bilingual is beautiful. The teacher then shows Kenzie and her classmates how languages are related and how words like algebra and lemon come from Arabic words. Inspired by a quilt that Kenzie's grandmother made for her, the students learn how to write their names in Arabic and then make a quilt-like collage with all their names on it. The project then inspires others to celebrate and share their knowledge of languages as well. The last book I wanted to share is a classic, The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. The original illustrations are by Jeff Stevenson, and the newer edition is illustrated by Joanne Louvretoff. The story begins with two kids who get scared because of a noise from an unexpected storm. They run to their mom and say, we want to stay close to you. And their mom says, well, you know, we're always together no matter what. And that's when Liza asks the big question. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed? And that's when mom begins to explain the invisible string. A string made out of love that you can feel within your heart and that connects you to everyone you love. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? asked Jeremy. Yes, Mom said. Even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, Can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. The kids keep asking about different kinds of situations, but eventually they're comforted, head to bed, and begin to dream about all the invisible strings that connected everyone in the world. For those of you who are interested in follow-up activities, there's also the Invisible String Workbook. So that's all we have for today. I hope some of these gems help you find a little sparkle during this time. I thought we'd just end with a song and feel free to sing along. I see a gem inside of you And feel a gem inside of me Waiting to shout, come out And dance about in a journey of discovery So if you're feeling down And your face has a little frown You can read, dance, play, sing a song or pray And turn your mood Take care everyone and I will see you next time.